Hey there, and welcome to the Build Me A Brewery podcast. My name is Chris Hayton, and this is part two of the marketing, design, and beer media segment. In this episode, I chat with Adam Mumford from Men at Work Agency, who provide full marketing and advertising suite of services, including public relations, content creation, digital, social media, and much, much more. As the name implies, they lean more towards male-driven products and brands, including Ryobi, Kennard's Hire, and also within the craft beer space, having worked with the Australian Brewery on their rebranding a few years back. In our chat, we discuss the importance of a brewery having a marketing strategy and the services a full suite marketing agency can provide breweries. So I hope you enjoy it then, my chat with Adam Mumford from the Men at Work Agency. Welcome, Adam, to the Build Me a Brewery podcast. Thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks for inviting me, Chris. No, that's fine, mate. And uh, like uh, we were talking off air, uh, I sort of got referred to yourself and, and men at work uh, through Dan at the Australian Brewery, which I know that you've had some dealings with in, in, in terms of uh, providing some services about their branding and uh, marketing side of things. So I guess the main purpose of this episode or topic is is the marketing and branding side uh, for, for breweries and what they need to consider. Um, you know, yes, they can probably make great beer and they've got a bit of a local following, but you know, the, the branding and the marketing side is, is much more powerful and, and, and probably things that get overlooked at the beginning because of maybe budget and finance restraints and all that. So there's a lot of DIY type marketing going on, I'd imagine. So I'd love to sort of get your thoughts being a PR agency and public relations um, expert on, and what that means to brewery owners in improving their brand and, and, and so forth. So before we do, I guess, get stuck into that, are you able to give the audience a bit more insight about yourself, how you got into the industry and, and a bit about Men at Work? Yeah, for sure, man. Look, I, I got into the industry. I, I decided that I wanted to do something totally different. I was in sales up until I was about 24. And one of my mates was a copywriter with a pretty big agency and he told me that copywriters, it's a pretty cool industry, a pretty cool um, job to be in. I went, oh, okay, that sounds cool. So I went and got a job with um, um, uh, McGrath cleaning out the filing system, McGrath um, estate agents back in Paddington at that stage. It was a one, one-off um, real estate agent. And um, I was cleaning out the filing systems and, and by the end of the week, I just turned around to the general manager and I said, hey, uh, listen, you realise I'm a, I'm a copywriter? as well and they said really so we've got a job going right now as a copywriter and publicist i've never been a copywriter and um they took me up upstairs i was in a pair of board shorts and a t-shirt and he said all right so uh so here's what we need you to do you know come and start on monday that was friday two weeks before that i told my wife that i was going to be a um a copywriter and uh and then all of a sudden I was, she said she says awesome what are you going to do i said i suppose i better go and buy a thesaurus um so that was (laughs) That was that was it. I started I started the following Monday, and John McGrath then for the next three years won the best corporate image in Australia. Then I went out on my own. I started a company called Use My Mind. The first client I had was Sarah Lord and Real Estate, who also won that year that I took them on. They won best corporate image in Australia. So then I had every real estate company basically chasing me down to look after their their profile and branding, and thought I'd better start diversifying. So I got into wines and beer and coffee and a bunch of other industries and and went from there, grew from strength to strength. I sold that company 12 years later. I had a two-year non-compete clause. And then when I came back, I, I realized that uh, there was a, everyone was sort of wanting to work in fashion and beauty and health and all of those areas. And, and we started looking after brands like Victor Lawnmowers and Barco Hand Tools. And and realised, well, wait, wait a minute, no one's playing in this this boys' space, this men's space. So I decided to create Men at Work. So Men at Work Communications back then, we've, we've since refined to Men at Work Agency, but Men at Work Communications was launched in September 2011. And we, we kicked off with some really big brands, notably people like Kennard's Hire, Rhino Rack, Yamaha Motor and Garlow's Pies. And then when we got Garlow's pies, we were so stoked with it. We thought, look, you know what? We've got pies. What goes perfectly with pies? Beer. <laughs> we, we haven't got a beer client yet. So mm. um, we, started, we started having a look out there and someone um, introduced us to uh, Marcello. And 
and went, all right, Australian Brewery, let's let's uh, let's have a. We we hadn't quite heard of them yet. They they'd been doing some interesting things, and we went out and had a um, had a meeting with with Marcello and Dave Ward, who was at that stage um, the BD business development person for um, Australian Brewery, and we we they we like we really really enjoyed each other's company. We liked each other's style. I saw what they had in front of them and I went, look, this, this is a really, really good brand to be involved with. It's an, it's an upward brand. And they were really created to start with for the export market. That's why you saw with the packaging. It was very, very based on export market. But the, the, the beer was, in, in comparison to a lot of the other craft brewers out there at the time, they, they had a little bit more of a, a, a sophisticated palate. So that brand was very, very um, Australiana on a sophisticated palate. So it was sort of in between on both. So there was some refinements that was needed and and we realised as far as pushing that brand out there, we had to let the palate and the fun and excitement get around that. So we couldn't we couldn't rest on the actual logo of the brand. We knew that we could push that through in fun and exciting ways. So when we started with the guys, we um we we first pitched this straight in at a lot of the a lot of the men's based magazines and things like that, but we we came out with a really really cool angle. So beer and fun pairing. So not beer and food, not beer, it was beer and fun or beer and activities. So we said you have this beer when you go and play lawn bowls. You have this beer when you're playing darts. You have this beer when you're playing pool. You have this beer when you're sitting on the beach. You have this beer, you know, so yep, we had yep. beer unpairing and um, it worked a treat. That that took off so nicely. Then we just basically we just started doing a lot of invites for our journalists and main well, look, obviously a lot of the industry titles, but we wanted we wanted more than that. We didn't just want the shout and um, all of those um, those guys. They, they were awesome. They've always been unreal supporters. Don't don't get me wrong. Absolutely loved um, everything those guys have, have provided us with. But we needed the Australians, the Daily Tellies, the Sunday Tellies. We wanted that wider audience to really, really get to know this. So we'd have them come out to the brewery or in our office, we are based down in King Street Wharf. So we, we, we were like this no-nonsense company that only had male staff and we were in this multi-million dollar waterfront, harbourfront office cooking barbecues every other day and and having a supply of Galo's pies and Australian breweries beers <laughs> all on tap that people would just come in and come and enjoy these magnificent views and just talk talk shit with us talk talk about industries of like whichever clients we had we had power tools available people could pull <laughs> out a chainsaw and cut up a bit of timber <laughs> like it was it was awesome it was fun it was it was yeah. a little bit irresponsible but it was fun but uh, mate, we uh, this was back in I suppose around about 2013, 2014, uh, to, about 2013, and yeah, we we got a lot of interest and we got a lot of always inviting um, uh, our, our select media crew around. Um, we all became mates, so with friendship, anything that we had, any any time we wanted to um, to do something, you'd call on a mate to come and help out so any any time we had a new product they'd be the first to write about the product and look yeah we didn't have to go and send them a six pack or do anything or a four pack we didn't have to go and do those sorts of things uh, we'd invite them to come and sit and drink with us you know and and that was that was the thing while we're going we'd be talking ideas over beers we, we implemented we launched an ideas over beers day at men at work that we would have staff and other media come in and actually talk about ideas for different clients or their publication on how they could improve certain things, where we could go. And they were all like, always over an Australian brewery beer, you know. So that's, um, yeah, that's, I don't know, has is, is that covered me? Where, where yeah, we yeah, did I? You, um, I can tell you're in marketing. You, uh, you've you got that, uh, that ability to just, I guess, pick all the angles and then, you know, and share it with everyone. So, yeah. Um, I guess um, what I'm most interested to hear about from yourself is, uh, I guess, the importance of marketing to a brewery or, or I guess to any business. You know, if you're just so focused on delivering a great product, which is, you know, obviously very important, but, you know, you can have a, a very 
mediocre or average product, but it can be elevated by how good your marketing and, and how good the branding of that product is. So I'm sure that there's a lot of brilliant beers out there on the market that people aren't aware of or, or aren't as popular than, than others. And it's simply because maybe they don't have a very good brand or a very good marketing strategy. So are you able to give the listeners a bit of a, a schooling lesson on, on, on why it is that marketing is important to a brewery's brand or a, a business's brand? Yeah. Okay. Well, two things you just said then, um, which I'll, I'll recap and go over. You could have, and as I, as I just said within my earlier statement about Australian breweries brand, the actual brand wasn't the best for Australian consumers, but it didn't matter because we marketed it in a well. The product, the actual product inside was quality. The actual look of the can, the brand, it wasn't, or the logo, that probably wasn't totally at the best to start with, right? But because we marketed in a way that we put this in, put that out there as such a quality beer, we got a lot of supporters behind it, tasting that beer through those avenues I told you about, that made that be a success. Now, you could have the best brand in the world, the best marketing people behind a brand in the world, but if that product isn't quality, it's going to pitter out over time. It really will. You have to have something worthwhile buying to market. Now, people will go and market just about anything. They'll try to market anything. They might pull in really good marketers to market about anything, but that product, that beer, or, or whatever it is that you're you're producing, that that's not going to stand the test of time unless you've found a category of where it fits. You know, so everyone's palate is a bit different. You know, VB is still you know one of the the largest sold. Uh, Forex Gold is still one of the largest beers sold. You know, that's palates that are that are probably mainstream Australia. That um that are people being right into it. VB branding, well, you know, is it unbelievable probably not but what it does it offers stability and security for that drinker for those people that like to go and drink it they know what they're going to get now that would be seen as a quality product because it's sold continually right that's seen as a product that has been well marketed had a lot of advertising pushed behind it and went for it same with forex gold in the craft brewery market anyone that likes craft beer goes i would not even touch that with a barge pole right you got a lot of snobs in the craft beer industry too let me tell you you got people that sort of think that they, they know everything uh, about there is about beer and it ain't true unless they've got someone who wants to drink their beer their beer isn't worth a piece of shit you know but yeah so it it, it comes down to everything that you do you've got to find a market to get that product too so that's that and you know that yourself it's like that's everything within, you know, you're, you're a brewer. So you understand that that brewing process to get that quality product or a product that is going to serve a certain segment has to be done well, right? Um, then you have someone like us that comes in behind it and goes, all right, yep, this is a nice tasting beer. But no matter what, even as marketers, we've got to believe in the product. I've got to taste a product and believe in it to actually be able to sell it and market it. I'm not going to market anything that's just whatever. We, we get approached by a lot of brewers and we don't mm. like the beer. So therefore, we're not going to market that beer because we don't believe in it. And we're not going to be able to sell it to our friends because we don't believe in what that beer tastes like, you know? So in, in, in essence, to your original question, marketing is so key, but the quality of the product to a segment to sell to is more key. It's having that, that product to be able to be marketed to have return business. That's what you need. Mm -hmm. um, Adam, with the type of services a, a typical PR agency would offer, what would that involve? If a, if a brewery um, wanted to approach men at work or a PR firm, what would you offer to them in terms of about their marketing and brand awareness? Okay. Look, when I started the company back in September 2011, PR in general is totally different to what PR is now. Okay, social media, influencers, the advent of, of these additional elements have, has taken PR in a different direction. So our, our agency is no longer a PR agency. We are a full service agency. So we offer everything from um, activations, 
content creation, social media, digital SEO, the works. You run the list run down. We will do everything now. We used to rely on our ideas, uh, able to, like, you know, the ideas I said to you before about beer and fun matching. Look, you know, we've, we've had robots waiting in line for the iPhone 6S. We've had a guy um, um, trimming the, uh, the, the Pacific Highway from Brisbane to Sydney with a, with a, um, a brush cutter, uh, all in name of raising brand awareness, right? With uh, Australian Brewery only last year. We did a collab between Australian Brewery and Messina. Um, so we had a a, a beautiful... Um, That's the gelato drop. beer, isn't it? Yeah, the, the gelato yeah, beer. Yeah, uh, Dan mentioned gelato. that, yeah. Yeah, the gelato beer came out. So that got a lot of coverage because it was something different. We had a lot of people showing up to the actual um, the launch of that. Beforehand, like, you know, earlier in the day, we could talk about a beer and get that straight out. And the first couple of years we worked with um, Australian Brewery, we we're getting like, you know, 500 pieces of coverage a year, 500 pieces of media coverage. That's enormous. Look, the Messina, Australian Brewery Messina collab, that would have got in, within a month, that would have got a, probably around about 40, 40 pieces of uh, media. So that's really important. So ideas, ideas are still key. You've got to come up with ideas. But now you need to have a little set of budget to go with those ideas. Don't expect free publicity, especially since COVID's hit you're not going to get free publicity anymore. Every media that is going to be running something wants to be paid, right? Because everyone's advertising budgets were cut. Mm -hmm. Everyone who runs something for you on their social medias want to be paid. They don't just want product anymore, free product. They want a payment, then give them some free product and they'll talk about it. But, you know, you might still get some nice bloggers and some good people with followers, uh, you know, 50 odd thousand followers on Instagram It'll still run your product with maybe a thousand bucks, pay them a thousand bucks, get them, you know, three months worth of supply of alcohol, like, you know, a, a, you know, a carton every month for three months, and they'll just run posts for you continually. Like that, that, that sort of thing can still work, you know, but it's don't, don't think too much anymore that you're going to get anything for free because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen. It used to with a really nice story. Really important thing to do to add to your any any of the elements you do and something that I would have people when they approach us is look at a give back angle. Everyone's got to look at that time now that everyone needs some emotional equity in their brand. Something you, you should be looking at giving back. When you start, if you've got something like that hinged to the start of your, at the start of the, the launch of your product, you're going to be going in there with a, a, a bit more of a bearing in mind for the potential consumer. A lot of millennials. So a lot of the people that you're going to be selling to, especially in the craft brewery, craft brewery, you, you, you know, a lot of your market is going to be, let's face it, age between 25 and 40, right? So the, uh, the bottom end of Gen X and the millennials, they're always, when they look at anything they buy these days, they've got to look and say, is there, what are these guys doing responsibly? What are these guys doing responsibly to give back? What are they doing for the environment? What are they doing for our world? What are they doing for, for, for anything, for conservation? It's becoming a pretty big thing with millennials. Mm, when millennials look at this, you know, you are right in the center of it. You're 32, man. That's, you are right in the center of that hit, you know? So, and, and look, you know, I'm, I'm sort of above that now, but I'm still thinking about it because I'm, 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 I'm in tune with how many people are making millions upon millions of dollars every year and not doing anything back to the communities that they serve. So that's a really, really big thing. So when you're setting your brewery up, you know, seriously consider that because mm. not only does it make you feel good, you don't have to go and rant about that. Don't have to go and rant and rave about that because it's, it's, it's in bad taste to go and do that. But what, what it is is to have it there, it's, it, it adds so much so much more value to your product to your brand yeah well and and that's what i guess a lot of the big boys in you know despite the industry or product they're selling you know there's always this charity this give back type angle um in their marketing whether it's you know just to sweeten certain things elevate a certain image but uh you're absolutely right and and the craft yeah. beer scene is all about local as well um, yes. you know so everyone's saying that local is more important than ever you know and and to be honest i i just want to simply start out 
and be a, a good local brand to my community and, and have everyone come in and, and have a beer and uh, just be that sort of pillar in the community of, you know, that's where everyone goes to have good beer. So um, yeah. I guess giving back to the local community and and all that will, will definitely assist in that. But um, uh, Look, I, I have to say, Chris, outside of this as well, with you doing this, I think it's fantastic because, look, number one, your thoughts of, of creating your own brewery, but you being so um, generous in the fact that you're putting this podcast together so other people can go and do that. That's a cool give back thing. So, you mm. know, whereas other people mightn't see that, I do. And, you know, look, and, and because you're, you're talking local, you're talking, it, it's going to be happening anyway. You, 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 there is going to be an influx of brewers. So for you to create this, you've got a really nice marketing tool, but yep. it's really generous of what you are doing. So, yep. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if I've mentioned it throughout the podcast as of yet, but, um, you know, there, there is motivations that will, like I was saying to you off there, number one is just getting the information and having an excuse to sit down with professionals like yourself in the industry to talk about all the important aspects of opening a brewery. But you know, for full disclosure, you know, it, it would be nice to know that this will create somewhat of a brand when we go and eventually open our own brewery. And, you know, we'd be somewhat of a, a bit of an authority of sharing information, a bit like the Black Ops guys have done um, with their podcast. You know, they've been very generous with a lot of the content they've shared on their journey, where mine's a, a slightly different angle, where it's more educational. It's not just my journey. It's just to how to bloody open a brewery, really. So whether it's what they want to do or what I want to do, it's going to be different. But there's been some great content on this. So, but yeah, I, I'd be lying if I said that that wasn't an angle I was taking as well. But um, yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's free content. And um, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like uh, give back and and uh, this content, you know, will possibly form part of that. And I mean, social media is so big these days, and you know, it's so easy for you know, you see these DIY type marketing people who, you know, think uh, sick in an ad on Facebook or just a, a post on, on you know, a social media handle. Um, now, I've been doing it with this podcast to get, get it in as many ears and, and hands as possible. But um, what, are, what are some things that uh, I guess a brewery tied on budget could do in the beginning before they would, you know, have maybe the cash behind them to engage a, a PR agency like you? Um, look, I, I think the, uh, to, to start off with, I think the guys, anyone, anyone looking at it, uh, you, you, you brought up a really um, crucial point being local. All right, look at the other things that are going on locally around you. See what you can offer to other local businesses and what they can offer you to you in return. That helps build word of mouth, okay? So I'd really be looking at every other local businesses that are out there, just doing the old school talk 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 that is what would create start creating a stir in word of mouth there was a brewery that opened up um near me called seven mile brewery beautiful brewery it's some of the best beer i've had i i love it they these guys i will be doing some things with as well in the future they have no budget but they have got some of the best beer going seven mile if you haven't heard of it seven mile oh. um yeah Based up in Ballina, in the industrial estate, we, we've got a beach here called Seven Mile um, Beach in Lennox Head. Um, Seven Mile Brewery, and um, they've got like the Cali Cream. They've got they've got a beautiful stout. They've got they've got a bunch. They've got a bunch. They do the mango, the the mango. They they've got the sours. They they've got everything now. The way that they've marketed, they've they've just they've been real people. There's there's it's a father and son team, and they've just been real in getting out there amongst the community. Suicide is a pretty big thing up in this region. These guys uh, have always been out to help out, to, to talk, yeah, getting people to open up and talk. They've put on comedy days out at the brewery. They've done things like that. You know, there's just little things that get out and gather to people to have people talking and discussing. They've become a part, one of the owner, the owner, of the, the father, Lou, um, he's a part of the Golden Oldies at Atlantics, which um, is the uh, uh, they they play touch football every Wednesday night. Just a part of the community, just run around, uh, all old boys getting together, running around, and that passes over to some other old boys and their sons, you know. So which opens up word of mouth once again back to the brewery. So, but these guys give a lot back in the community. All right, they've got artists that go and create 
awesome drawings on the walls, like graffiti drawings on the walls of pubs around our area. But there's always a seven mile tag in there, you know. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll have a, an artist and so the, both the pub and, and them will do that and it's a little bit differently. So, so these guys don't have the dollars to go out and just do full-time PR. They'll just pick up snippets of where else they can go for it. They'll do social media in-house. So anytime they've got a new beer, they'll talk about it. They'll talk about come in and try it out. They'll put on their, their free tryout days, their tasting days things like that. So things that just create word of mouth and people come and try it, they see what it's like and they go, oh, I like this, I want to go for it. They might get a couple of the local the local celebs. So up here we've got a bunch of surfers and rugby league players that have got some nice, only little following, but but following on, on socials. They'll have them drinking it and, and posting about the actual beer. So that gets just some other local groups getting involved in it. So that's, that's seven miles. On a, um, a front of anyone else who's doing it, it's exactly that. Look at all local businesses that you can get involved with. Um, look at some of your, your local rugby league players. Um, a lot of the towns where, you know, Penrith example, there's some of that like local club football, not, not your um, Panthers, but the next level down. Go and see what some of those players are. Get them to talk about it amongst their friends. Those sort of things work really, really well. Mm, yeah. So that you'll be up for a couple of cases, but it's it's look look at look at your areas of where you might be up, whatever you can deliver in in product in return to, you know, get someone, you know, posting about it, talking about it, whatever, giving it a review. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if uh, I guess a brewery does have it in their budget to engage someone like yourself, what would be the big differences between them doing it themselves and you guys? Like what are some of the, the big benefits that you can offer? Look, staff, I suppose, staffing, it's like, you know, anyone can go and do what we do. It just comes down to dollars. So you could get a team like us that can, as I said, get across all those facets of digital marketing, uh, social media campaigning, social media in general, your uh, content creation, your activations and execution, all of those. All of those can be done in-house, but you need a specialist to go in and do that. Whereas people can go and uh, grab someone like us, uh, they pay a retainer every month. Now, let's say, look, depending on the budget, um, retainers can sort of fit everywhere from sort of, you know, $5,000 to $50,000 a month. So, but a lot of those smaller brewers are more so within those realms of the 5000 to 10000 bucks a month, you know. If you, if you wanted to employ someone that could get across all of those facets, you're, you're paying for someone that's going to be worth sort of, you know, 200 or 250,000 bucks a year, you know, so therefore, you know, or if you've got someone that has our standard of uh, PR, that that person to employ in-house would be around about 100,000, 100 to $150,000 higher to get to the quality that we do, all right? So, so whereas we aren't just doing PR, we're doing a bunch of other things as well for you. So mm-hmm. that gives you a breakdown of, yeah, you can do it in-house, but you just have to go and employ three staff worth a lot of money or you can utilize an agency that you can get a crossover over sort of you know four to five activities um for less than that money Mm -hmm. and how how important is it to via social media to to engage with with your followers you know is it just as simple as just putting up a post on a weekly basis and letting them know what you're doing and new things like can you talk a bit about that yeah, look, it, it's all about engagement. Look, and, mm. but that engagement, it shouldn't just be about you. Yep. Um, so it shouldn't just be about your product. It's got to, it, it, you've, you've got to have something that, that wants people to keep coming back and looking at you, all right? So if you're just always talking about, oh, here's our new campaign, here's our new beer, here's this, people get bored with it. It's, it's, it's going, all right, well, these guys are just blowing their own trumpet, you know, over and over again. You've got to have things that talk some something of, uh, something interesting that's happening in the world of beer around the world, um, or the world of craft beer around the world. Something that might be going on over in the US or Canada that that we haven't even thought of here. Sharing that sort of content keeps people interested. It it, it could be something humorous that's happening. You know, just just sharing sharing things w- within your industry, obviously. That that's going to keep these keep these people coming back. 
Um, so, yeah, don't just go and post for, po- for, for posting's sake. Sure, talk about your product. You know, a, a, a post every week or two on that sort of thing is fine. Unless you've got something new to talk about, you don't even need to talk about a product post every week. Um, it could just be other things that are happening. It could be a function. It could be a barbecue day you've got coming up at your brewery, whatever. It just should be anything that is engaging, right? Yep. Um, yeah, not not just always blowing your own trumpet. Yeah, so relevant and try to stay away from self-serving type content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Now, you've, you've mentioned already some sort of out-of-the-box type ideas when it comes to, I guess, DIY marketing for the type budget brewery. From my days, uh, well, last couple of years, I've, I've been interested in, you know, a career change and uh, it's only till now I've sort of stumbled on a big passion project and this is um, opening a brewery. And But before that, I was looking into, you know, your um, affiliate marketing and um, what else, like e-commerce type things related to, you know, your Amazons and all that. And I dived in a lot in a, a, about email marketing and, and all that and, and getting together. How, how important, I mean, email sounds like it's uh, starting to become a die dying word these days because of all the social media but everyone in the marketing space still says that email marketing is 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 vitally important just to have a, a list of of people that are have signed up and and will you know want to receive you know regular content with you how important is the email marketing side yeah um edms yeah really really crucial so this this is where you get your database so yeah. that your your d- database derives from everything oh is is derives from the um, email marketing side. So that this this becomes your IP, your database, the people that love you. You're going to have your social media followers. That's great. That's great to have that. But these guys, these these guys that are a part of your database, this is your marketing gold, all right? These are people that have already bought from you, want to buy from you. They are just there. They're, they're ready. So as long as you keep on offering something of value, uh, something of quality, something that they want, you're not going to lose those people unless they stop drinking or whatever. But you're not going to lose that crew that have already been on your in your database. That that becomes something that becomes a saleable commodity as well. So yeah. once it, 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 as soon as you have a database um, and, a, and, a, and a solid database, you you become a saleable entity as well. You could have a have a, um, a brilliant product already there, but without a without a decent database, that product, your your brand is not going to have half or a quarter of the value of what you will have if you had a solid database that is yeah. there that's always supporting your product, always there buying. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. that's one hundred percent. So, EDMs or, or or you know any 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 electronic marketing um, that that's. 100 percent where you need mm. to be as well i've also seen some breweries come up with some creative ideas to sort of get people you know more engaged with coming to their brewery um more often uh, i think they're offering like rewards programs and you know even like a, a membership you know where they get discounted pricing on beers if they're a member and you know uh, have you seen that in the in the craft beer space i have i have indeed um look it's you know, that that's that's rewards a reward program you know offering incentives for loyalty you know and that's look it's you know you you get that in every industry don't we you know any yeah. industry out there so why not why not have it in the craft beer industry obviously be careful about what you're offering back you, people who enjoy their craft beer they can afford to pay a little more for their beer all right but yeah everyone loves a I, yeah, if you can go and get a, a five or six dollar schooner at a craft brewery, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, awesome, awesome. You know, that's that, yeah, obviously, you will get an influx of people on a Friday afternoon if you're offering that between four and six. But yeah, be careful because you don't also, you don't want to bastardize the industry either. And you don't mm. want to damage, you don't want to damage the quality of product. Look, if yeah, special days, certain days, as long as it doesn't become too much like a, a normal pub happy hour, it's fine. Pubs can control that and do what they need. Um, a local brewery, you, you, you've got to be careful. Once you start going down that path, people get used to paying that price then. You're right. Yeah. So you've got to be 
got to be a bit careful with that because as soon as you know yourself, you know, oh, oh well, I'll, I'll go and get um, a nice Chris's brew for for his five dollar or six dollar happy hour schooner instead of paying the usual eight or nine dollar schooner or five dollar midi. I can get that for that price if I go in at that time. Starts cutting down the times when people can go and visit you. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're looking for the other incentive you're offering. Oh, uh, free sliders with these with with a schooner or free sliders with a with a midi or whatever it be. Um, it's yeah, we're just we've got to you've just got to be a little careful about how you're going off with your rewards programs. Look, everyone does it, and yeah, it is it, it's a part of our future, and everyone likes to be rewarded. But I'm saying just be be careful about how you go. It. Don't don't yeah. don't um don't cheapen your the the quality of your product. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good point to consider. And because what you what we're essentially up against the craft beer space is you know the 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 big breweries like your CUBs and your you know your Sahis and and all that. And you know the biggest advantage they have is price over us. I mean, yes, they make quality and consistent products, but I guess the craft beer space has this thing where you know we make more interesting and flavorful beers and that's why it costs more to produce but you know i see to my industry and in recruitment you know people keep undercutting everyone and uh you know the margins get smaller and smaller every year and you know it sets precedence right across the industry so exactly like you said if we start trying to sell beer way below than what a typical small craft brewery does it's going to um you know, eat into everyone's margins across the industry. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, look, it's, it's, um, I've seen like, you know, and, and, and everyone does it. Ballistic beer at the moment, they've got a really, really good uh, Hawaiian Haze Pale Ale out. And they're doing some really, really nice campaigning based around it. We were sort of talking to them about doing a couple of activations, but uh, I, I was up front with him and I said, listen, man, unless there isn't, so it was Wade, Wade Curtis, the marketing um, director up there. Um, I said, unless you've got, um, some dollars to back up. We had a, um, a an idea for the world's biggest emu to go with it, a, a Hawaiian barbecue type of thing, you know, okay, yeah. um, to launch it out of the out of the brewery. And he loved it. And he said, "Oh, will it get? Will this get? Um, you know, coverage?" And I said, "Look, in this current environment, um, straight out off newsworthy. I know it's newsworthy, but I don't know whether anyone will be running it because people are always saying, well, where's money? We'll come out if you give us some money, you know.' So, um, so look." It, no matter what you do, look at um, look at all of those 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 new those new inventive styles. They still got to have quality. Look the the Hawaiian Hawaiian um, haze. It it is a beautiful beer, um, but they've still had to put marketing dollars behind it to get it out there. Now ballistics become a, a bigger player now. They have in the, yeah. in the in the craft brew market, but um, but look, you know, there's nothing stopping. As you said, if you create something different something nice you're going to get your cut through but you need to have your plan behind you on how to keep pushing that cut through through yeah and in one of the earlier episodes of the podcast uh, when i was sitting down with pete from waywood brewing um he he mentioned about you know if you're not going to have a business plan at least you need to have a marketing or, or a product strategy plan why why is that important and, and are you able to give the listeners a bit of insight into what what exactly it is? Um look, I'm not sure about product strategy. I don't really work on those that much. Yep. Um but what I what I do do is um yeah, uh, look a marketing a solid marketing plan is um is is something that uh, yeah, if you don't have your business plan, you do need to be able to know how you're going to take this to market. All right, so your business plan covers everything. It covers like your all your costings, everything else that's around, right? Um, all, all your operating, the the works uh, as a part of that business plan is a marketing plan. It just comes into the business plan as another section. Yep. Um, your marketing plan. Look, obviously, you need to have a plan to have your best beer you can have or the best product you have, right? And then once you know that you've got a decent product, it's like you get the marketers in there. So yes, it is crucial to have some sort of idea of how you're going to take that nice tasting beer that you and your mates are, 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 are sipping on on a, on a sunny Saturday afternoon, how are you going to get the rest of the world to know about that, you know? Because yeah. yeah. otherwise, if you don't, yeah, your mates will know about it and that will be about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, marketing plan is crucial. So even if you started brewing from your backyard to going and 
and then gra- grabbing a shed at your, lo- your local industrial estate, yeah, the, you, you need that marketing plan. You're back, unless you're going to keep it as a backyard backyard Saturday afternoon party, you know, uh, as a home brewer, that's, that's, um, that's all you'll be without that marketing plan. Yeah, and is there any, any other things that you think that we haven't touched on that you think any small business or a brewery would have to consider in the marketing space? The, um, look, the only thing that I can say is just you've got to have passion. You've got to have love. You've got to have passion and love for what you're going to do. You've got to wake up with a smile every day. So unless this is something that you go, and especially going to all that effort of creating product like a beer that in, a, in a very, very crowded marketplace, you've got to love it and you've got to want to do it. If you don't have that passion, don't worry about it. Go and do something else. Go and do something that you're going to be able to follow with your heart and have passion about. That's, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, well, thanks again, Adam, for coming on the podcast, mate. I do appreciate your time and advice about the marketing side. Anything you'd like to sort of share with the listeners about any upcoming events or you know, products or product launches that are coming up with um, the Men at Work Agency? Yeah, look, there is one. There's one really close to my heart, mate. I, um, I set up a charity. I, I lost my brother to suicide two years ago. So I, I, I set up a, a charity in his name. He always wanted to um, have a own, a own a chip shop, a hot chip shop. And oh, it was right, just yeah. all he'd have on top was just different flavoured salts. So we, um, I created Chip In with Jace um, last year and we've been raising. Um, it's, a, it's a chip van that's out at Seven Mile Brewery right now. And it just sells um, uh, chips with different flavoured salts on it. And we've, we've been running that for a few years um, and we, we donate all the money back to uh, Standby and to, um, and to Headspace. So Standby is post-suicide to help families through post-suicide. And uh, Headspace is for, our, um, uh, for, for people suffering, sort of 18 to 25 who are suffering with depression. And we've just created a new thing, which I'm, I'm pushing out into the barbecue industry. So any of you brewers out there that are going to be doing barbecues, keep your eyes out for salts. With, so salt is the new brand that I've created from Chipping with Jace. It's spelled S-O-U-L-T. Um, the, it's salts with soul. So we 100% of everything, 100% of all our profits go straight back to the mental health industry in local areas. So if you are going to go and grab salt for your your barbecue out there at your brewery, we will give any money that you've or any of that salt you bought, it will go back to your local community to depression or mental health out there. So that that is a really big one for us. That's that's, that's a great initiative. Big. Yeah, thank you, mate. Uh, we're going to launch. Um, so, Chipping with Jace was launched last March. Oh, sorry, March 2019. Um, Salt with Soul will be launched in uh, March of 2021. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks again, Adam, and do appreciate your time. For everyone out there, that was Adam Mumford from Men at Work. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks for listening to the Build Me A Brewery podcast. That was part two of the marketing, design, and beer media segment. Part three of the segment, I chat with graphic designer Jared Fuller from Zendok Design to discuss all things design for a brewery. As always, if you are liking the podcast so far and find the content useful, please give us a follow and rating on whatever platform you're listening on. Also, follow us on all our social media handles as well as visiting our website, www.billmeabrewery.com.au and much more complimentary content will be coming your way if you sign up to our mailing list. I'm Chris Aiton, your host, and this is the Build Me A Brewery podcast.